All right, and how's it going out there, everybody? So I know it's been a little bit, but since our last video, but we've been working on something new, a new concept. And because of that, we're moving into a new section of our, our video productions with Choker Films. And the first fruits of our labor will be our game reviews. We're gonna do actual video reviews. And the first game that's coming up on review is none other than 99 Night 3 by Konami. Now, here's the thing with this game. First and foremost, I don't know how you take a good idea. That In the beginning, they had something cool. They wanted this Dynasty Warriors-esque game, and they wanted to show off what the hardware could do. So the big selling point for the game was having so many characters on screen at one time. And yeah, the AI was pretty stupid. They had basic attacks, but it was pretty cool to see all that on screen. Here you have this you know, early 360 exclusive Dynasty Warrior type game. Well, fast forward like four, you know, four years or whatever, and we get this. Now, I don't know if it's the absence of Tetsuya Mizuguchi that makes this game suck so hard, but I feel really ripped off as a gamer <laughs> because I paid 60 bucks for it. This is more, I can see this more as a downloadable title for like 10, 15 dollars, maybe. You know what I mean? But for all intents and purposes, a $60 purchase, no. But then again, you know, we all buy a bad game from time to time, right? It's been a while since I really felt burnt. And the two out of 10 that I give this is well deserved. Let's start with the game's visuals. Now, arguably this may be the strong point of the game, right? Because the gameplay is repetitive and mundane. The story is almost non-existent. The voice acting is horrible as is the lip syncing. But the one thing I guess you could say is, okay, even though it's nothing to write home about, are the game's visuals, right? There's a lot of like flashy special effects and lighting and stuff going on. Um, the particle effects and physics don't exactly portray realism, but it's still cool to look at. You know, it's, it's, it's visually interesting, but it's, again, nothing to write home about. Other than that, there's nothing in the game that I can point to as being a positive. It almost It's almost like they took the first game and everything that was good about that and could have been taken for a sequel and enhanced and made better. They were just like, screw it, we don't even want to deal with it. And they wanted to start from the beginning and because of that, I think the game suffered. That, and I truly believe that there has to be some corporate bigwig somewhere that was saying you have X amount of dollars and X amount of time to do this, no exceptions, right? Because let's face it, it's not like they're Bungie, it's in the, which is a guaranteed, you know, millions of copies of this game is gonna sell, you know, reach. Everybody's gonna buy this game, right? If you have a 360, you're gonna buy it. If you don't have a 360, you're probably gonna buy a 360 and buy reach, right? They don't have the luxury you know, to have that kind of support for like time or money. And I think it shows in the final product. Um, other than that, uh, the sound effects are okay. You know, and again, nothing to write home about. It's pretty mundane, you know, sword swinging stuff and your basic magic sounds. Uh, the orchestrated theme isn't bad, but it's not as catchy as the original. Um, the CG cutscenes that were found in the first game they were I mean, a few and far apart, but they were, you know, pr pretty cool for the time. They're non-existent, at least from what I've seen, playing through this game. Now, granted, I have not uh, played it through completion. I guess that's a caveat I should, you know, uh, put out there. But I've played enough of it to see what happens as you progress. And I've earned enough characters and started their storylines and stuff where I kind of get, you know, what's going on. And I don't think it's gonna change because it hasn't changed thus far. And frankly, if I have to play a game for, you know, X amount of hours before it starts to get good, mm, I don't know if that's a time sink I really wanna get into. So overall, 99 Nights uh, 2 and 3 by Konami is not a game that you should purchase for 60 bucks retail. If you can pick it up, use, maybe, if you don't have anything else to do, but to be honest with you, there's so many great games that have come out already this year and some uh, from last year that never got picked up by people. You have a back catalog to dig through before you get to this. I would even say let it drop to, you know, like 10 bucks or something like that, and then maybe pick it up. But 99 Nights 2, I give it a 2 out of 10, just like I did in my written review. I'm, I'm sorry. There's just nothing that I can say that justifies the the entry price for this game. And quite frankly, uh, the, the, what they did put into it is repetitive, boring, 
in in a lot of ways insulting. It's like, dude, we're we're that hardcore gamer. Well, I hate to use that term, but you know what I mean. We're the core gamer. You know, I know a good hack and slash when I play one. In a, in a day and age when you have like God of War three, Dante's Inferno, Bayonetta, let alone, I mean, come on, you can't come out with something like this. Even Dynasty Warriors, which this is a clone of, you know, brings it better. So I'd say avoid it. Pick it up, maybe ten bucks down the road. This is Larry Ragland for DailyJoystick.com, and a special thanks to Choker Films. Signing off.